So last lesson we looked at the Etsy password file. Now we're going to look at its partner, the Etsy shadow file. As I mentioned in the last lesson, passwords used to be stored in the second field in the Etsy password file, but that's insecure because everyone has to be able to read the Etsy password file. Now passwords are stored in the Etsy shadow file. So let's take a look. So you can see similar fields to the Etsy password file. They're still um, separated by colons, but some entries have these long strings in them. That long string is the encrypted password and some other information, which we'll go over in a second. So at a high level, it has username, password, last password change date it looks that that number doesn't look like a date because it isn't it's the number of days since january 1st 1970. it's a very strange system i don't know what the reasoning was in order to get this number you have to know the current date or what the system thinks the current date is so i don't know why you couldn't just i don't know why, why that's like that, but that's the way they chose to do it. Uh, so the next field is the minimum password age. So what some users do if they have to change their password periodically is just cycle through until they can get back to their old password. So let's say your computer remembers the, the last five passwords you use. If you go through that and put in a new password six times, you're back to your original. You could be back to your original. So this value would make you have to wait. So if you put a one in here, a person would have to wait one day to try another password. So um, they, they would have to go six days to get back to their original password. And most people don't, don't go through that headache. So this is just kind of to keep people from cycling through like that. Maximum password age, 99,999 here. That's about 274 years. So in effect, your password never expires. Number of days before the password expires to warn the user. So seven days before 274 years, um, this would warn you that your password's about to expire. If you have a reasonable value in here, instead of 999,999, if you have 90, um, it would warn seven days prior to expiration. The next field is often blank, but if it's filled in, it would indicate the number of days after the password expires until the account is disabled. And then the last field could be, if it's in use, an expiration. And that is, again, days from January 1st, 1970. So, again, I don't know why they do it that way. Um, if you're using one of the programs to do this, like UserMod, you don't have to worry about that January 1st, 1970 thing. So let's go back and look at the actual encrypted password field, this whole field. This isn't just the password. It's actually a few items that tell you about the password as well. So the first, it's delimited by dollar signs. So the first dollar sign, dollar sign six, says we're using SHA-512 hashing algorithm. SHA-512 is, is uh, pretty strong. It's the lowest you probably want to use on a, on a modern system. And it's one of several possible algorithms. You could have dollar um, sign one would be MD5. I definitely wouldn't recommend that. Dollar sign 2A, Blowfish. Dollar sign 2Y, Blowfish with the correct handling of 8-bit characters. And dollar sign 4, which is SHA-256. Um, these are all spelled out in the uh, downloadable materials for this lesson. So the first part, 
hopefully you always see at least dollar sign six here. I don't think there's anything higher that would be in there at this time, but uh, going forward, who knows? The next field from this dollar sign to this dollar sign is a salt for the hashing algorithm that generated your password, your encrypted password. This randomly generated value is plugged into the software that actually generates the password. This way, if two users have the exact same password, they'll still have different hashes because these are randomly generated. And that will result in a different password, a different encrypted password, even though the passwords may be identical. You'll also notice that many files don't have a password in them. They just have an asterisk. These are mostly system files that were created as your server was built. So they can't log in. They can perform functions, but they can't log in interactively like, like a human user would. That's pretty much it for the structure of the Etsy shadow file. Please remember, if you do want to modify this for some reason, do not modify it by just opening this in a text editor. You would want to use VIPW minus S. And that will let you more safely edit the file. It's still not a good idea unless you have to for some reason. But uh, please, please try to use the, the tools available like uh, user mod. And on to the next lesson.